words into your favourite language other than English. The Speaker in the British Parliament is neither Tory nor Labour. You have about 30 seconds. Google us, Google it. So, first, Speaker is Sprecher. Yeah? You agreed? Yes? I'm sorry? Redner. Redner. Google? Sprecher. Who is it? Who is in the parliament? Who is the speaker? The person speaking? Sorry? The spokesman. No. Yes, please. Thank you. You will see them in the British Parliament, arguing at each other, screaming, throwing papers everywhere, and there's a person in the middle who controls who speaks and who stops, and says, order, order, resume your seat. Uh, that's the speaker. This is kind of sprecher. It's kind of redner. What is it? Moderata, very good. You'd have to go to the Bundestag. In, what do you have in Austria? Okay, do you have that person in the Austrian parliament? Yes, good. In Spanish, speaker is the president of the parliament. Presidente. All right, serious problem. So how can you solve it? What could you do? Redner or Sprecher is, is too literal, it's not going to work. It could be President, but that's ambiguous because the countries have a President. What else? Give me another solution, somebody, please. Yes, please. Vorsitzer. Okay, I'll pay that. Cultural equivalent. Anything else? All right, personally, I leave it in English. Who doesn't know English? Come on. And I'm indicating it's not what you think it is. Yeah? They are speaker. It's one case where it's useful to have recourse to the foreign term. Why didn't you do that? Google didn't do that. And then Tory and Labour, your solution, generalised. Yeah. Main parties, yeah. I thought that was lovely. It's a good solution. This is generalising. Anyone changing the perspective? Yeah? Changing the density. Yeah, because you're generalizing. Uh, or leave them in English again and explain what they are. They're the main political parties. Okay? You ready for no, that? wasn't very successful, was it? Try another one. Oh, I've given you the answer. That's really useful, isn't it? Oh, okay. Uh, this was an example of um, how density can be reduced to make prose understandable. Okay, it's just there are whole books now on how to reduce this, but the public service is carrying out ongoing adjustments to its tax review policy. Nobody understands that. Rewrite it as the public service is reviewing its tax policy. Somebody understands that. We are reviewing the way you pay tax. They understand it. Get rid of the jargon. Make the sentence shorter. Use pronouns. Use active verbs. Okay? It's part of fighting bureaucratic prose. Uh, but I'll, I'll deal with that next week. Example from Schreiber. True example. The cities are connected by a 327-meter freeway. Something's wrong because that's very short for a freeway, an autobahn, <laughs> and so you could correct it. But, uh... Oh, sorry. Well, you can't do them. I've given I've given you the answer. So. Uh, you can go from Orly to Paris on the RER. It doesn't make much sense, but you can translate it as from Orly Airport to the center of Paris on the regional train marked. R-E-R, -E okay? And then 
some tourists might stand a chance of getting to Paris. <laughs> but I, I copied this out of the actual brochure that was uh, given on the plane. You know, uh, you know, think of people, think of what information they need. This technically is called explicitation. Okay. Everybody in France knows that Orly is the airport. And they know that that's the train that goes from the, reg the regional. They don't know what RER means, neither do I. I used to catch it every day for five years. I still don't know what it means. But um, by, using, by taking implicit cultural knowledge and making it explicit, we help people understand the text. Okay? Explicitation. Ah, that's it. I knew it was coming somewhere. This is what's on the passport. The sole property rights of the government of the custody of the passport are requested. What's your authority of the person who returned the passport to the government? Authority should at least be lost. I'm just sorry, why? I live in that sort of bureau, but German does it too, doesn't it? Yeah, length is no criterion as long as it's all there. All right. That's, this is how it is in the passport, just to prove I'm not inventing this. And this is how it is in English. And they broke it up into three sentences. I'm so proud of them. Yeah. Somebody, not that anybody's really going to read it, but at least it makes sense. Okay, so uh, this resegmentation, this uh, reducing the density of the text, I think uh, is one of the things that translators should be doing. Here's a real case that I had to translate last year. It's in a footnote, okay? It's a book on Picasso. I, I translate lots on art history. And uh, it's just a, a village. And in the footnote, some guy had three brothers, John, age six, and Mary, age five. Ah. <laughs> All right, brother and a sister. Okay, but what do I do with three? Okay, the text is contradictory. There's always a way out. He had at least one brother and one sister. So sister with an R. Uh, at least. I'm not lying. I don't, I don't know if you had another one or lost. Don't, don't lie, but, you know, there is a solution to every problem, and often it goes beyond what's in the typology. Oh, I mentioned that one earlier on. Yes? But that one, it's a footnote, about two seconds. No, I mean, I really, I, I could, like, it did occur to me, oh, I could phone up the archives in the village and the little man could go down and bring out the, the thing, and the birth certificate and find out. I mean, if I had a day, I could solve it. But it's a footnote, who cares? Okay. Ah, okay, that, next week I'll talk about that, or when it's, when to, how not to work too hard, that's coming. I'll explain how you know when to work hard and when not to work hard. All right, that's, that's coming. Okay, this is the last example because people have to go. I used it this morning if anybody was here. But, um, pre fax days, or pre pre internet days, I used to get translation via fax. And this is a letter to go to the International Colombo File Association. So, the Athiondic Colombophilia. I don't know what that is. People who like Christopher Columbus, perhaps, but no. From the letter, it's obvious it refers to pigeons because it's about pigeons racing around the Atlantic, the North Atlantic and the North of Africa. Wonderful things to do. Huge pigeon races. But I don't know what the association is called because my text is in Spanish and it's got Colombophilia, que no me suena. It doesn't sound like anything you would put in English. Okay, here I worked. I phoned up the client in Madrid and I said, can you send me some parallel texts? What do you get on Google in two seconds? I had to ask for, but she did. She faxed me a brochure. She said, oh, we've got this brochure that explains the whole deal. And she sent it to me and it's in English. I thought, great, perfect. I get this and I copy the terminology. International Colombo File Association. All right, okay, I'll copy that. Turn over the page. Uh, our patrons, and you've got a photo of the king and the queen of Spain. All right? 
And under it it says, the kings of Spain. Because in Spanish, it's los reyes. They're both masculine. I mean, the Spanish doesn't say the queen. And uh, so I knew that uh, this translation was not going to help me. In fact, I think the girl who answered the phone was the translator. Um, back to square one. And the deadline is very nearly approaching. I have to solve it. How do I solve it? Well, it's a letter to the members of the association. Dear members of the association, I have no idea what the name of the association is, but I didn't have to, because they know, because they're the members. Okay? Problem solved, move on to the next one. Some theorists say, to, un to translate, you have to understand the text completely. I am proving to you, you don't have to. Okay. There's always solutions. You can always get around it. Okay. Um, that's it. There, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A range of solutions, a range of things you can do. Some can be done in the booth in interpreting. Others are more for written translation. Okay. They don't map on entirely. Uh, but uh, many of them involve creativity, which is an important part. In principle, any solution can be applied to any problem. It's just that some require more work than others. And I'll talk about work and effort in the next two lectures. Thank you for your attendance.